Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day, thanks to viewers, supporters, and sponsors just like you. Today's rundown is going out to Big Kai226, who enjoyed our previous classic episode of Electric Playground. We got you this rundown just for you. When it comes to loot boxes and microtransactions, it looks like EA might have learned its lesson. The first intel on the next game in the Battlefield franchise is reportedly leaked, and it's good news for anyone who hates loot boxes and microtransactions. YouTube user Almighty Dak, who accurately leaked intel about last year's Battlefield 1 before it was announced, has posted a new video where he leaks details about the next game in the franchise. He claims that it will be an all-new entry in the Battlefield Bad Company series, and like a previous expansion for Bad Company 2, will take place during the Vietnam war. The gameplay will apparently be focused on smaller maps with tighter, more focused gameplay rather than the more large-scale conflicts in more recent Battlefield games, although it will still have a wide assortment of vehicles. Best of all, he also claims that the game will have no microtransactions, with the publisher eager to avoid them after the disastrous launch of the recent Star Wars Battlefront 2. This seems like a smart way to evade the same kind of criticism and win back players, but keep in mind that none of this has been officially announced, so consider it all a rumor until further notice. EA has previously stated that a new Battlefield game will be coming next year, although they haven't provided any official details on what it is. Over to another battle, the biggest new game in the world has finally made the jump from PCs to consoles. Well, at least one console anyway. PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, which first launched on the PC back in March and has since become a global phenomenon, makes its console debut today as a timed exclusive on the Xbox One. This is a big win for Microsoft. Battlegrounds is easily the biggest new game in the world right now, creating an entire genre of battle royale shooters. So the fact that Microsoft has an exclusive window for the console version is sure to increase sales for the Xbox One. There's no word on how long the Xbox exclusivity will last, although there are rumors that a PS4 version will arrive in mid to late 2018. As for what players can expect, this isn't the finished version of the game. Like the PC version, which is still in early access until next week, the Xbox One version is only available through Microsoft's Game Preview program and will still be getting tweaks and updates until the final version arrives. That means certain features will be missing, most notably the new desert map that began rolling out on the PC last week. The final version will likely hit the Xbox One early next year, so we'll let you know when that happens. Meanwhile, over on the PC, the finished 1.0 version will finally take the game out of early access a week from today, complete with the desert map, new weapons, graphical updates, and gameplay enhancements. Now, the frying pan. A Western release for a long overdue Pokemon game has finally been detected. It looks like the 3DS game, Detective Pikachu, first released in Japan early last year, is finally coming to North America and Europe. The European ratings organization Peggy has just given the game a rating, indicating that a Western release could be imminent. It doesn't look like North America's ESRB has rated the game yet, but if it's coming to Europe, it will almost certainly come to North America as well. A Western release seems like it would be a no-brainer. Detective Pikachu serves as the inspiration for the upcoming live-action Hollywood movie of the same name, so it would make a lot of sense for the game to be released in the West before the film arrives. The movie recently inked a release date of May 10th, 2019, so expect the game sometime before then. The 2011 sci-fi novel Ready Player One is getting some company on the shelf. With Steven Spielberg's big screen adaptation of the novel hitting theaters in just a few months, Ready Player One author Ernest Cline has revealed that a sequel to the book is on the way. Speaking with fans during a recent Facebook live stream to promote the film, Cline confirms that he's begun writing a follow-up novel, although he hasn't said when it will arrive or what the story might entail. Ernest Cline does reveal that the movie has played a big role in getting the new book off the ground. He says that there's no better inspiration for a writer to return to a world they created than seeing Steven Spielberg bring that world to life. The Ready Player One movie hits theaters in March. You might have to wait a while to see the next season of Stranger Things. The highly anticipated third season of the hit Netflix series might not arrive until 2019. That's according to Chief Jim Hopper himself, David Harbour. In a recent interview with Variety, Harbour reveals that the third season won't premiere until sometime in 2019, with filming not expected to begin until mid-2018. Harbour says the reason for the wait is that the show's creators and writers, the Duffer Brothers, need the time to work on the scripts because, as he points out, good things take time. This isn't that strange of a thing. There was already a year and a half wait between the first and second seasons, so it looks like the pace won't be moving any faster going forward. The Nintendo Switch has passed another impressive sales milestone. 
After being on store shelves for nine months, Nintendo has announced that their new console handheld hybrid has sold more than 10 million units worldwide. This is in keeping with Nintendo's earlier sales predictions, and looking ahead, they're expecting to bring their total to as much as 18 million by March 2018, anticipating a huge holiday sales boost that is yet to be factored in. These are impressive numbers, especially compared to their last system, the Wii U, which only sold 13 million units in its entire lifespan. For comparison, the Switch is selling about as fast as the PS4 did when it first launched in 2013, although it's not selling as fast as Nintendo's most successful console, the original Wii, which sold a massive 20 million units in its first year. We recently spoke with our pal Andrew Collins from Nintendo Canada about the launch of the Switch, and you can watch that right now on our channel. That wraps us up for today. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back again tomorrow with a brand new rundown for you. In the meantime, keep your eyes peeled for all kinds of other content that we made on the channel. And if you dig it, hit subscribe. You got to hit that little bell as well. And if you're so inclined, that sponsorship button too.